hi welcome to joy Fido international and as always we have something exciting to give to you today um you know what we represent we represent sharing our knowledge with you sharing our experiences with you sharing everything we've been through in life with you and as you go through life and you meet all kinds of things it is what sharing sharing with people you love because it's all about life you want to make sure people don't make as much mistakes as you have made and so i call it the sense of time so as you're going along the route of life you make mistakes you correct it for people who are coming behind that's that's what today's video is all about it's about sharing our experiences with you so welcome on board my name is joy fido and i'm going to dig straight into it what's the big deal about today um it's quite interesting because i have four children and my experiences of raising children to me is quite exciting i make sure i have fun along the way and I may not be an expert, which I know I'm not. I make my mistakes, but as I make them, I like to share my experiences with other people and especially children in particular, because I have been a child myself. I will not be here if I haven't been a child. And so I want to guide our children as they go along the journey of life. There are so many things you're going to be coming across and today is going to be about some of the hints and tips that will help make this life a lot easier for you to handle it's all about a stress-free life and i struggle to try and get a, a fantastic title for it something that will make it catchy and make people want to watch but um the best i could come up with is top 10 and half tips and i call it half because it was just going on and on my brain was just going into overhaul when i was noting these things down and i thought you know what i have to stop somewhere maybe as time goes on i'll come up with more but there's so much more and i didn't want to just carry on forever you know my videos they could take on for so long so 10 and a half tips to help the youth 10 and a half tips to the youths to the youths for if a, a stress-free life and i have to do this because i have children and i have to do this because who knows someday i'll be a grandparent and then there'll be children and there'll be children and there'll be generations after me and it'll be nice for them to remember that i did bring these things up for them to look at and learn from okay so then i have tips to the youths for a stress-free life that's the title so if you're a youth, you're a mom, you're a dad, you're a parent, okay, it might not be the experience I've been through, but it will, it will be exciting if you can add this to what you know and also guide your children in whatever way you can to make life a lot easier for them because we have, as parents, we've been through quite a lot and we like to leave something for our children to experience. Okay, let's dig straight into it. It says, I start with the home. Number one is the home, the tips for home. So you, you will live in a home. As a child, you will live in a home. But what I tend to find, which I do with my children is, obviously the child takes the home for granted. And the child thinks the only place I have responsibility is in my school or is at work. And then home can just wait because um, there will always be somewhere, someone out there taking care of the home. Now, this big message is especially for the children in the Western world. I know way back in Africa where I come from, most homes there's someone who's there looking after the home, a house help or a house boy, someone who cares for the home. While the mom goes to work, the dad goes to work, the child goes to school. But here in the West, it's different. The home is there sitting there waiting for all of us to go out and come back. Go to work, go to school, go everywhere and come back to take care of the home. So you live in a home. 
Now the big deal is, if you hate dealing with home, you are eventually going to have a home yourself. So that's a big message for our youth. You're going to have a home for yourself. And I know so many of my friends' children who struggle to deal with this. It's one of the things I have hound or pressed onto my children to accept the fact that they will always have a home. Not the home that I created for them, but they will have a home of their own. So if you don't start putting your eyes down in your home to look after the basics, you know, the cooking and the cleaning and the laundry and the organizing and the taking care of things. If you don't do all of that, nobody's going to do that for you. And so lots of these children of today think it is their mom's job. Mom, you go and clean. Mom, you go and cook for me. Mom, you look up, you get the laundry done for me. No, as a child, my six-year-old started cleaning plates when she was six. And she, she watched me do the laundry and she started sorting out the clothes. She saw me do it and she took it over. And today she still does it. It's become part of her. My son, I make sure he's in the kitchen helping out. So this is where this message is. It does not matter if you're a boy or you're a girl, you are going to be in a home. If you're a boy, you will have a wife and you need to support her in the home. If you're a woman, you will have a husband and your people should support each other. So that's a big message. It's a tip. Start learning today to take care of the home you live in. I said to my kids, it's not enough to look beautiful and glamorous out there on the streets. Let everybody look at how amazing you look. And then you get home and it's in a mess. You have to take care of every part of you. From the underwear you wear, from the bra, from whatever things you're wearing, from to the clothes, to the shoes, to the makeup, to the hair, everything you have to take care of it so please children of today do that number two let's look at your friends lots of children of today make a big deal of friends i remember when we were moving from london to where we are now my, my kids then were crying mom i'm gonna miss my friends my friends are everything to me your friends are not everything to you that's a big message to you young people. Your friends are not everything to you. Your friends are people you just come across for the time you have come across them. Friends don't make and break you. That's a big message for you. So don't attach so much to friends. Now this is one big me message you're gonna get from me. If you have a friend, two things happen. They either help to lift you up, and this means both spiritually, emotionally, and physically, or they pull you down. Now watch your friends. If you find that whenever you're with them, your spirits are down, you don't feel good, then something is not right with our friendship. Don't, if you find yourself angry when you're with them, if you find yourself sad when you're with them, if you find you're constantly upset when you have to be with them, then your spirit is telling you something. It's saying, stay away from these people. That's your intuition. It's speaking to you. If these are people that you can't wait to be with because there's something about them that lifts you up, that, that excites you, that expands your spirit, makes you feel good, makes you feel wonderful about yourself, now, these are the kind of people you need to be around. So be very careful the friends you attach yourself to. You know, there's a saying that, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. So if these friends are the type, a friend told me a story about a young 15 year old recently, whose mom is going through so much. Because this child has attached herself to this group of girls who think of anything else, nothing else but boys. They're just thinking how to look pretty and go out and hang around boys and, and, and are not thinking of anything else. Their schoolwork is secondary, you know, everything is not important. Now we live in this time 
of digital age. We're in a digital age. Now, digital age has its advantages and also its disadvantages. People are using digital aid to become millionaires. They're making so much money out of being seen on the screen. But you know what? This same thing that's given so many people so much financial power is also dragging a lot of people down. People have to fake it to be noticed. It's not the number of likes that makes who you are. Because these are just friends on the screen. They don't connect with you. If you're broke, if you're happy, if you're sad, if they don't even see you at all again, they don't ask for you. They don't wonder. I mean, recently I had an issue with, with, with Facebook where someone corrupted my account and I was shut down by, by Facebook. And I was offline for about maybe a week sorting out this problem. And when I came back, I just said, oh yeah, guys, I hope you didn't miss me too much. And only a few people were like, oh, I hope you're okay. I was off for a week. So now, can you imagine how it would have felt like if you felt my life depends on Facebook, my life depends on Instagram. The minute you're off, no one cares. Do you get it? So all that imaging, you know, people go over the top just to give an image that people will like and take. Like, 50,000 likes, and you feel good about yourself. I am so popular. No, you're not. It's just a digital thing. If you're not selling a product, I say to people, if there is nothing you're selling, uh, all you're doing is exposing your bra and opening your midriff and showing your big bum, whatever it is, you, you think you're selling something. Where is the money being exchanged? People are just seeing your body for the sake of it. Now, that's not where you want to be. So be careful with these friends. Learn to listen to your parents. If they're giving you advice, please listen to it because we have been there. And this is one of the advices I'm given as a mother. Learn to know who you are and learn not to rely on this fakeness of digital media, on this fakeness of some friends, and try and find out who you are. So that's number two, friends. Number three is your health. Your health is very important to you, extremely important. Without your health, you don't have a life. Without your health, you don't exist. So, my advice to you is be careful the things you put into your body. To all you young people out there, it is so important. We live in a time where there's so much. Right now in the West, there's so much food. But you're going to find out that these foods are not the kind of foods that your body can break down easily. And that's why you find out right now that there's a lot of obesity cases going on. There's a lot of health issues going on. People are struggling and suffering from all kinds of illnesses. And they don't come from any other source but from the things we put inside ourselves. So be careful what you put into your body. That's the big message. So much fizzy drinks, so much genetically modified foods, so much labels with so many ingredients attached to it. I actually bought a drink once that claimed to be ginger beer and I read the ingredients there was not one drop of ginger in it. Now they do these things just to confuse you. They do these things just to take the money off you. And for you young people, you, you don't have the patience to go and cook. I mean we've gone past that age now where people take pride in cooking. You need to start thinking. If you want to live long enough, you want to see better days in future, you, you need to start preserving this body of yours. So watch what you put into your body. Number four is your image. I know when it comes to today's children, image, yes, is everything for them. 
and so image is everything for you. But then some don't really care about this image. Now, most times you've read this saying that people judge the book by the cover. If you don't present a well-organized image, people automatically read that cover, they don't give it any thought. When I'm saying image, I don't mean until you go exposing your body, then you think you've got an image. It's a well-groomed image. An image that you take your time to take care of your body. You learn to clean yourself. Learn to go into that shower and take a shower. Make sure you are not becoming a health hazard to anybody. Because there are people, there are some people who don't care about taking showers. There are some people who don't care about how they smell in the midst of other people. There are some people who don't care about their hair, their nails, their eyes, their armpits or on the, on the, on the arms. So all of these things add up. There are children who don't even care about ironing their clothes. In my time, ironing was a major thing. When I was going to secondary school, it was such a big deal. Our uniforms were inspected all the time. Behind the ears were checked. Your nails were checked. So you need to start caring about how you appear. When we say appear, I'm not saying go and expose all your midriffs. That's not what I'm talking about. You have to be that person that people want to be around. Deodorants. Cheap perfumes, they may not be too cheap, but at least basic perfumes. Basic body sprays. So you smell fresh when you're with people. There was a movie I watched recently. I think Miss... Con I can't remember what that movie was called. Congenuity or something like that, yeah? And the lady did say, people care about people who care about themselves. So if you don't care about yourself, people don't care about you. So that's what this big message is about. Your image matters a lot. Care about it. Not necessarily exposing yourself, but showing that you love who you are. We're not saying you must go and buy the most expensive clothes. Just basic. And when you've got them, you clean them. Make sure they smell fresh. Just fabric conditioner would do. Give your clothes a smell, you know, a fresh smell. So you fit in nicely into society. People can accept you and you accept them. You don't stand out as that one who doesn't care. Number five. Education and knowledge. Now, there are some children out there who feel education is not important in their life. And they can't wait to just get into work. You know, as a young person, you think, oh yeah, let me just go and start making money. And I always say to people, young kids around me, the minute you start making money, that's when responsibility starts falling into your life. Now, with our education, what you're going to find is you become what they call unskilled labor. Unskilled means you're not trained. You don't have knowledge. And so the kind of jobs that are suitable for you are just manual jobs. You go pick that off the floor. You go do this. You go do that. Because they feel you haven't put any knowledge in your head. That's what unskilled labor, those are the people that do unskilled labor jobs. And the only way you're going to jump over that level is through education. So education, what education does is it helps to give you knowledge. Now, what you will not find me say to anyone is, the minute you start hitting education, just go crazy on education. Don't stop. There are people who do that. They finish the first degree, they go to secondary, then they third degree, then it just goes on and on and, and they want PhD and then they want to be a professor. And question is, what will you come out to do when you're done with all that? 
most times what they end up doing is teaching so if you're not dreaming of being a teacher eventually in your life that's not where you want to be but a very basic education like university first degree or the ond or hnd or go to some college and get some basic good qualification the minute you have that you'll be in a position to analyze situations analyze mean whatever you find yourself dealing with you can think that's what education brings on you can think you can break it down you can analyze it you can make sense of it so if you don't have that basic education you will not be thinking in that sense so any opportunity that can give you education please take it on take it on don't reject it because now you think better than people who have not got that knowledge and apart from education the next thing is information so education and information will go hand in hand ideally but what you're going to find is some of us educated people even these professors or phd holders that i'm talking about what they tend to do is they just focus on the academics which is just reading and passing the exams and forget that in real life you need to have information information though doesn't come to you through just academics so now once you're in that position able to read and write getting information becomes something that you have to take on there is no teacher that's going to be teaching you go and find out about this go and find out about that you know we have google today and we have facebook and we have all these social media now what happens is if you want to know anything like we have youtube as well you just go onto youtube and you type it in you go onto google and you type it in that's information you're seeking knowledge you're seeking extra knowledge and the bible says it too my people suffer for lack of knowledge solomon says it he says if anything else the first thing you should seek is knowledge now there's another topic i'll be coming up with in future which is about what happens when you don't have knowledge what happens is you become afraid fear is one of our worst enemies in life and do you know what causes fear lack of knowledge so if you don't have knowledge what you're going to end up doing is every little thing would scare you so knowledge becomes the answer this is where my people suffer for lack of knowledge knowledge are things i would recommend to every young child out there anything you're looking for anything go and seek the answer first search bible says is to search and you will find you must do that to get ahead in life find answers seek answers anything you want to do you want to sing you want to learn to be a singer learn and go out there search and find out the people that offer such skills you want to learn to be a dancer same thing you want to learn to be a sports person same thing there are people out there millions offering this knowledge but if you don't seek it you will never find it number six is spirituality lots of people out there just feel oh yeah uh, i don't believe in god uh, what is that i don't know do you really believe was there really a god if there was a god why are things the way they are and i hear this all the time but one thing you haven't asked yourself is did you create yourself did you just wake up one morning and just see yourself here and oh wow you did not create yourself have you wondered why you are here because these are the questions we really need to ask ourselves why are we here what are we doing here which is why i do the other program i call um the purpose driven life 
That was the big question. What on earth am I here for? What is my big mission? What is my purpose? Why am I here? What am I doing here? Where am I going? Where am I from? That's where spirituality comes in. You will find that as you travel the journey of life, there's no, it doesn't get any easier at any stage. I know with my children, when they are in their primary school, they, mom, it's so hard. All this homework is so hard. And I say, really, don't worry about it. We'll sit down, we'll deal with it. And then they go to secondary school and it's getting harder. But it's getting harder. It's not even, you have not even broken the ice. Because as you go to university, it gets harder. And as you finish in the university, you think, oh yeah, I think I finally done. And then you become your own person, you get a job. Then it gets even tougher. Then you have to deal with life. Then you have to deal with bills. Then you have to deal with needs. Then you have to think of how to provide these needs. And then maybe you then get married and then you have to deal with a husband or a wife, as the case may be. And then you have to find that two people now you're beginning to clash because your 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 ideas are not connecting this person is thinking that way you are thinking that way and then you have to have children and then your kids are not giving you their own little grief their own take on life and so it just gets worse and worse and then you now hear the ones who oh yeah we've broken up it's it didn't work and then what you then find is some people think oh yeah it didn't work with that person but it will work with another person. That's a big mistake. Because sometimes, like, uh, um, what's her name? Oh, I've forgotten her name. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Taylor. She did it seven times. Even married one person twice. It still did not work. So that's how tough life can be. It doesn't get any easier. So spirituality, it's so important to give you what they call peace of mind. To give you what they call love. To give you what they call hope. To give you what they call joy. I get people ask me all the time, how do you maintain this youthful look? It's a lot of peace of mind and it's a lot of struggle. To be strong enough to handle every day as it comes. Because life itself is a war. There's somewhere in the Bible that clearly says we deal with principalities and powers. And I tell you every day I meet these things and I just laugh. You know why? Because I have a very strong spirit. I have a strong belief in God. I strongly believe in Jesus Christ who gave his life there are people who sit there and query religion in whatever form the religion takes you as long as you believe that this is what is supporting my inner being you are fine but don't be one of those people who don't want to know I don't care about these things because what happens is whenever these attacks come this principalities and powers being what they are will always come you will just hang in there and you hear people these days constantly young people are actually going there and committing suicide and it's a huge shock because you're wondering you haven't even seen life and you you've given up already that's what it is so you must find something that gives you strength Spirituality gives you inner strength. And for me, a lot of reading from the Bible gives me strength. I, Whenever I have to deal with these things, I just go into the Bible and I start reading my passages. But what I do nowadays, I don't wait till I have to fight with some spirit. I just make it every day habit to read my Bible, sometimes twice in a day, because I know it gives me inner strength and we need it in everything we do. Seven. A job. Or what I would call 
life purpose. Now for lots of us, young people that you are, you just want to have a job. In our mind, we've been trained from childhood. As you're growing up, you go primary school, you go secondary school, and everyone's saying to you, don't worry, when you get a job, when you get a job, that's what everyone says, when you get a job, and so you just keep looking forward to this job. And I remember reading somewhere, and it says, you, you have this hope until you're 25 and it all crashes. Because as you're growing up, you're looking forward to this thing, this thing called job, you're waiting for it. You're going to school and taking all the exams and you just are hoping that one day all this is over, you have this amazing job that answers all the problems. And then some children get to that age 25, nothing has happened and they give up hope. And they crash at 25. And where I read it was, you are alive until 25 and you die. Not because you physically die, but you die mentally. And then the rest, you just go through life and get through 60 and then you finally, you're finally buried. But you've been dead since 25. Now, that's not where we want to be. That's not what, where I want any child who's looking up to me and hearing advice from my experience. I, that's not where I want you to be. I want you to realize that for every being that's been put on this earth, there is something attached to you. There's a talent, there's a gift, there's a purpose for which you were here, you've been sent here. There's a mission for which you've been sent here. And so that's what you should be aiming for. What is my purpose on earth? And how you're going to find out what this thing is, is through whatever your spirit connects with, at, you know, mostly. What do you do that you find the highest type of joy? What do you do that excites you so much that you're happiest when you do it? Now that, that's your talent. That's something that has been attached to you and brought to this earth. That's the gift that you have for the world. Because you're gonna find that the more you do this thing, the better you get at it. And so what you wanna do is, once you know what this is, let everybody around you know, let your parents know, let Yes, you go through the basic education, but that's what you should be chasing. Because once you do these things that connects directly with you, you're going to find that you do not get upset when you're doing it. You're going to find that even if they ask you to do it free, you will do it. Now, that's when you know you found something. Because apparently you, you don't even do a day's job if you do the things you enjoy. And I tell you one thing, sometimes we just want to take up a job because for the sake of it, I just want to pay the bills. That's what I hear young people say all the time. I just want to pay the bills. You'd be surprised that you're going to get angry every day because all you're hoping to do is just pay the bills and then you're being maltreated and then you're being treated like you don't exist, you don't count, and you're just doing it because you just want to pay the bill. At what stage do you get satisfaction at what stage do you feel comfortable at what stage do you feel good so don't just take up anything because it pays the bill look for your dream and follow it i read a story recently um on on whatsapp and it was about this old and older ronaldo ronaldo from brazil if you follow football you know about it so this was 20 years ago, Ronaldo from Brazil was such a big star in football and then he was paid 20 million pounds. 20 million pounds was his fee at that time. And then this young boy then from Brazil, 20 years ago, Neymar, that's his name. So if you're into football, you would have heard the story. Neymar took a picture with him. Being someone he, he admired so much, he looked so much forward, you know, up to him. And so they took a picture together, a selfie. And today, this very year we're speaking, Neymar is now going to be paid 222 million pounds. 222 million. Maybe not paid directly to him, but this is what his price, the price on him is, 222 million. From the same young boy of 20 years ago, with his mentor or someone he looked up to, 
being paid 20 million today he's 222 million that's a dream he had a dream and he followed that dream he never gave up on the dream he worked so hard for that dream he fought for it so that's a big message if you don't have a dream and you just float through life oh let me just do the job just to get paid so i just get to pay the bill you will flow through life but if you have a dream and a passion and you follow it it will lead you somewhere that's a big message and i really feel for our young boys especially young boys from african background or black young boys who don't see dreams as anything who just want it now who get into all types of antics don't listen to their parents because you live in the West. Please sit down, have a dream. Fight for what you love. Focus on it. Take up training. Chase it. Seek it. Ask questions. You will get the answer and you will get there. You are here with a mission and that mission is what you are good at. Chase that thing you love and you will find the answer. Number eight is relationships or love. That's, that's a big one again. Very big. Um, now, relationships or love or partners, as the case may be, is one of the things that really, really affect people. They really affect people. And you know why? They affect us from the heart. Now, something of the heart is something no one can touch. No one can feel it. Only you that is being affected is the one experiencing it. So, this is one of the places where I try to guide as much as I can. Now, try and remember this. You don't go into a relationship just for the sake of I am so in love. Oh my goodness, I love. The funny thing is love disappears sometimes in relationships. Because most times this love is not from the heart. It's actually through the eyes for most people. So they meet this young girl. She's so beautiful today. And then they tell themselves, men, they love her. And maybe two years down the line, maybe she's eating a bit more food. Maybe some things happen. That image that you met is not the same. And suddenly she doesn't look that same person again. And the love disappears. Now you want another love. The one that's fresh and young again. And this goes on. And, and most times for girls, they don't want to hear it. But he said he loves me. And so you put all your heart. I call it investment. You invest your emotions into this person. If that person's spirit does not connect with your spirit. And something is struggling whenever you're with that person. Then it's not right. This thing called love. It's about your spirit. When you're with someone. If something holds you down, is not sitting right, that's not okay. Be very careful at this young age. Because when it comes to love, we could make sometimes a lot of mistakes. We do. We make a lot of mistakes. It only takes a lot of maturity to cope through love. It takes a lot of maturity to cope through love. So many people have died on the travel of love, on the trip of love. And you know what happens most times with love? It destroys. You might find as a young person, you're so exuberant, you're so excited. We just finished about passion and purpose. And you have, like the sky is the limit, the amount of things you can do with yourself. And then you meet this person who, who actually diminishes everything, who destroys everything, who stops everything. 
And sometimes you might look back and you say, but is that really me who's sitting here? I remember as a, a young person, I dreamt of being this and I dreamt of being that. And you met this person who said to you, but who the heck told you you could do that? You cannot do that. You're not good at it. And so what have they done? They've dampened every spirit in you. They've destroyed everything that made you who you thought you were. So big message here is, if you meet someone who's not there to support who you are, that's not the right person for you. Be careful. Be very careful. To me, I feel especially at the stage where, you know, the young fool, youthful age, you know, meet someone young and excited, you want to get married. And then I watched a lot of movies or not movies or maybe even on YouTube wedding videos and then they're doing the vows and everything okay you stand there you do the vows you're excited what an exciting future you're hoping to have and then normally they say one plus one is one no i said one plus one is three that's my maths in love and marriage one plus one is three and why am i saying three because there's the one you and there's the one of this person but the one you and the one of that person brings something on the table which is called your strengths yes you may have weaknesses if you're studying business or or accounting or whatever there's something called the SWOT analysis so strengths and weaknesses opportunities and threats Let's not go into opportunities and threat, threats now. Let's just look at the strengths and weaknesses. Every human being have, we all have it. We all have our strengths and we all have our weaknesses. So what happens when two people come together, you bring those together too. You bring both your strengths and you bring both your weaknesses. Now what happens is your two strengths become half each. And that's where your two strengths come together to make one. And that's why one you, one you, and those strengths make three. So what you want to do is to grow those strengths. Grow the strengths. The weaknesses will be there, but make those strengths stand out. Because the strengths that make the two of you will bring something amazing to your relationship. But if in this relationship, these strengths are not even noticed, and then the one party is busy damping down on the strength of the other person. What do you have? You even have less than half. So that's where you have to be careful. Be careful who you attach yourself to and say you are in love. And it's even worse for women. Men handle themselves. Oh, they can hop from one woman to the other 20 times in a, in a lifetime. Not even lifetime, in a year. A man can meet as many women and do social relationships, no big deal. But women cannot do that because women, we tend to put our heart into something. So for a woman, be careful the person you finally say, this is where my heart is. Because if that person is not going to help make your strength even stronger, that's not the person for you. So young people, Big advice. Okay. Let's go to number nine. Number nine is money. Now I try to pick on as many things that I know that will help to make your life run smoothly. Number nine, money. Money. Why is money so important? Money makes the world go round. Money is that thing that... Um, if we don't have it we feel bad um money buys us happiness most times you hear people who say but money is not happiness yes money itself is not happiness but without money what do you find sadness so if you don't have something and you get something invariably that thing equals that thing as well so if you don't have money you get sadness that means if you have money you're going to find happiness that's my little maths okay so how do we find money one of the big things I'm gonna advise you as a young person is you must earn it 
before you use it yeah and then before you spend it big advice to you young people because i've had lots of people say to me young people in particular no one teaches us how to use credit card in uni no one teaches us how to handle money in uni yes because these are life lessons no one teaches life lessons in university because even the lecturers are struggling to cope with life lessons so how can they possibly come and teach it it's only your parents who should be in the position to teach you but if your parents your parents also are struggling with life how can they possibly teach you what they are struggling with so that's why i'm here trying to guide in my little way contribute my little bit to life if you don't earn it don't spend it why because it will give you peace now when you start spending all these loads of cards you march into the shop right now that's the in thing sometimes they say uh, touchless or cashless contactless all kinds of less you just throw the card in and you throw it out and ooh, money is in your hand and you can buy anything but have you forgotten that you're going to have to pay back? Have you forgotten that someone who put that money in your hand will ask for it later? I know lots of young people think they're short cost to everything. But when they start chasing you with these letters, these credit card companies start chasing. They start knocking on your door. They start writing you irritating letters. Now imagine what that does to your peace of mind or your state of mind. It does a lot of negative things to you. You remember we talked about fear. The minute fear comes into your life, you cannot think anymore. All the amazing ideas, all the fantastic things that make you who you are, all that passion that you have, will disappear through the window because it's been replaced with fear. It's been replaced with unhappiness, with sadness, with anger. Okay? So please, 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 do not spend money if you have not made it. Now, the, the next thing you probably will ask yourself, which, which I thought about is, how do I make money? Um, which is one of the topics we will deal with one, one of the days. How do I make money? Now, think about it. When you, when you work for a company or work for a business, you get paid money, right? So question now is, what did you do that made them pay you? So that was some skill. You, you were able to do something. That's why they gave you the money. So they're actually paying for your ability to do something. Okay. So ask yourself again, what are the things I spend money on? What do you spend money on? You spend money on so many things. So the same way you take that money and buy something and buy something that could have been somebody buying that thing off you buying off you so that's money so money actually is just that thing that thing that you exchange that's what money is is a means of exchange money is a product money is a skill the other day I was having a child with my little girl and she said, oh, poor me, I haven't got any money. I said, no, you're not poor. And you know why? Because I know her. She has so many skills. She can do so many things. She's very creative with her hands. She can bake all kinds of cake. She's good at cooking different kinds of food. And I said, that's just money sitting in your hand waiting to come out. So that's what it is. The minute you have skill, now look at it and think about it. Will people need this thing that I know how to do? Anything that people need, just like the things you need. You don't walk into the shop and just grab something and walk away. You grab it and you pay them money. So that's the same way if they needed your skill, they will pay you, you will give them that and they will pay you. So anything that people need. So whenever you're thinking money, you just think, what do people need around me? If I can supply it, that means they will pay me. That's money. So anything people need, they will pay for it. So start thinking in that line. Look around you, what do people want? 
People want to look beautiful. So that's beauty. People want makeup. Oh, look. I did my makeup and I look so good. Now, whose, make, whose face can I go and give them makeup so they will pay me? There's some people pay so much money to get their face made up. You know, especially for weddings. Do you know how much money people get paid to go and make up the bride? Or make the bride's hair? You know. P people want to look beautiful. So people want to wear clothes that stand out. Now, if you knew how to stitch those clothes, that's money. Especially here in the West. People just, people are looking for tailors or, or, or seamstress who can give them unique outfits. Outfits that not everybody else can, can have. We're back. So gadgets is money. So phones, computers, cameras, all of that, you pay money for them. Yeah? Hair care, fashion, makeup. People, people take pictures and get paid for it. I would. You glossify it and everything. People give you entertainment. So Beyonce will sing, I will pay to be at her concert. And other musicians. Uh, football. So the Neymars of this world, the Ronaldos of this world, they play and we, we pay season ticket to be there. Do you see how money works? So just think about it. Anything that people will exchange money for, that's money. So I want you to start thinking as a young person, in what way can you contribute to making money? What else can you give to the world that they will pay you for? Because that's what I meant by that talent that you already have, by that skill that you already have, by that thing that God has put in you. There is something about you that you need to look into yourself and say, there's something I love doing so much. That is something I could do and get paid for. As a child, I thought about everything I could do and get paid for. And today, my hands are in practically everything. I mean, right now, my next biggest thing is traveling. I know I love traveling, but I've just gone the next step, taking a, a course in, tra uh, in tourism to encourage people to start looking at how to see the rest of the world and understand what is going on. You know, as I get along, I'll be sharing with you as well. But, you know, that's what it is. Everything you, you do that gives people satisfaction is money. You did their hair, they were happy, they will pay you. You did a painting, they loved it, they will pay you. Um, you did their makeup, they love it, they will pay you. You made some food, you made their cake, their wedding cake, their birthday cake. You did an amazing salad. Whatever it is that makes people happy, you sang this beautiful song at their wedding, you know, there's so much out there you can do to make the world happy and you get paid for it. So that's how money is made. It's not necessarily until you go and work for someone and become a staff nine to five and get screamed at by some boss in and out. I mean, nails, people pay happily for you. their nails being designed. You're very tired, your body aches and someone massages your back. That's money, you pay for it. They want their eyelashes done and you put them, that's money. So stop thinking only until you're working for someone, that's when you earn money. Because that's the mistake our parents gave to us. That's the mistake society gives to us. Society makes us think that until we work for someone, we cannot make money. No, tell whoever said that, that I said, anything that gives people satisfaction, people will exchange money for it. And I know I will. So that's why I know people will. And you have been doing that too. You've been giving money for things you like. That's how you have been spending money too. So people will spend money with you if you give people what they want too. So enough with money and that's how money is made. Again, we could do a video just focusing on how to make money. But now let's go to number 10. We finished our nine, which was money and credits. So remember the message here, do not spend it if you haven't ended, okay? Because you have peace of mind as you grow up. 
no one knocking on your door and telling you nonsense people not writing you ridiculous letters and you're getting worried and then next thing you're sick next thing you're depressed next thing you're sad next thing you want to commit suicide all kinds of things happen and i don't want you to experience that number 10 is travel you remember i just mentioned about tourism as you're growing up learn to see the world learn to see outside where you're based because what happens people remain very very closed in their minds when they stay in one spot and i've met so many people who cannot think outside of their tiny little box because they've not seen anywhere outside where they live learn to see the world save the money whatever little money comes your way save it if there's one big thing you invest in which is traveling and seeing the world you're gonna see how your perspective on life changes you have an open mind you'll be more welcoming you'll be more willing to dare things to try new things to connect with other people you will not be closed in so travel is very important and that's why we have a big a big wild world and the good thing we're talking about digital age the digital age has changed everybody's life now you can see here and order things from china you couldn't do that in the past you can see here and buy things from africa you could see here and buy things in america so that's what digitalization has brought to us and it's not enough to just sit here and do that you can equally travel to those places do that Add that on your list of things to do as you are alive, as you're passing through life. Because it will widen your understanding of life. It will give you a better outlook towards life. So that was number 10. Remember we said top 10 tips. But then I now said 10 and half. And the half, I call it half because it just makes sense to make it half. Otherwise, it's also another point. And the other point was believe in yourself okay believe in yourself and have what i call a clean mind because you know when people keep asking but why how do you maintain your youthfulness how do you if your mind is troubled it affects every part of you you know this thing they call the cells that make us who we are apparently they are like transmitters they're like electric current the minute one thing happens it affects it right so it quickly transfers goes around everywhere so your mind has to be ready to be clean detoxified from time to time I know so many people who are dying by the minute they're dying by the day why because they have put so much into their mind and that's what leads to all the illnesses and the diseases that we're dealing with today it's not so much the food we eat sometimes yes food makes a big part by the amount of things you carry in your mind your mind becomes too heavy when it's heavy a lot of things happen so believe in yourself which is who i am counts who i am matters the person i am means a lot trust you and then clean your heart from time to time i hope this has made sense i hope this will support a few people out there because that's a big part of me once I can get across to one or two people I'm happy I've done my bit so I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of similar um, talks where I'm guiding as many people as I can and thank you so much for watching